Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can take your seat. And so, yes, we are on the year theme, Kingdom Watchers. We are on the series, Blessings Abound. And today we want to minister from the sermon topic, Godly Work. Godly Work. I begin. Salvation and sanctification are progressive works. Indeed, salvation and sanctification are progressive works that work on our human nature in order to elevate us to a divine nature. The reason you and I must attain to a place higher than who we are is because there is a work that God expects us to do after we are saved. The worst thing you can do is get saved and say, well, I'm good now. Mm -mm 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 -mm. If you ever do that, you will not last in the kingdom. Uh, yes, after you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you are then set on a path of shining forth as a light to spread the gospel message in order to win others in the kingdom of heaven. You are not saved to sit. You are not saved to chill. You are not saved to be satisfied with remaining only saved. No, there is a work to do. Servant of God, there is a godly work to do. It is godly because it is of God. It's godly. Because it is expected that God will judge it. It is godly because it is from God and not from us. God sent his son Jesus Christ to complete a godly work. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The life work of Jesus was to complete a work that will result in the salvation of mankind. Jesus did. And along the pathway of Jesus completing his divine godly work, God his Father proclaimed how pleased he was with Jesus. Matthew 3 and 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. That was in the river Jordan at the baptism of Jesus at the start of his ministry. Luke 9 and 35 reads, And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. That was on the Mount of Transfiguration. When they wanted to build three temples for Moses, Elias, and Jesus. God quickly, go put them in chat. God quickly made it known that the only voice they needed to hear was the voice of Jesus. Mm -hmm. God looks upon his servant and he monitors what we are doing. Are we doing what we are doing for the kingdom of God or for our own good? It must be God first and God alone. This is what makes it godly. Follow me, people. You see, one day, talking about godly works, one day we will stand before God and our works will be tried as to what value they are. Hence, we should aim to do all now with a standard of kingdom excellence. Only then will we hear a good report at the end. Let me read about it, Matthew 25, 21 through 23. It reads, 
His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So you see, it doesn't matter how much talent you have. It matters that you double what you got. You see? Huh? I don't know about you, but I have decided, even afresh, I'm going for the double. Every bit of talent, every bit of creativity, every bit of thinking, God, whatever it is that you have given to me, I'm going in. I'm going in for the double. I I don't want to give you back what you gave to me. I don't want to hide what you gave to me. I want to take, see, this is a, this is a move of faith. I hear it, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost said, listen, you doubling what uh, God has given to you, it's not about you. You're not the one that enforces and encourages and enhances and makes the double. If you take what gift you have, if you take what seed you have, and you just give it to God, God will double it. Mm. So church, we do godly works because these are the works that God will recognize. Huh? He's looking at everyone here and he says, mm, I, I know, of course he knows, I'm nation. He knows every work within us. And he's looking to see about what they do with what I gave them. Huh? It, 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 these works, they have eternal value. Hence, we must study to constantly show ourselves approved and to know what we are doing. It's not just something to do, but it is that which is called godly. You're not just coming to church to come. You want to do the godly thing. You're entering into his gates with thanksgiving. You're coming into his courts with praise. When you leave here, you're going to have gained something. See, if you put your talent, hey, I got that, there it goes. If you put your talent in during praise and worship, you're leaving with more than what you came with. You, you might have just doubled it right there. Do I have anybody that said, I've been through enough trouble this week, and I think I want to get double for my trouble. But can I tell you the only way that you can get double for your trouble is if you take your burdens to the Lord and you leave them there. Leave them there. Leave them there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Put it in the hands. In the hands of our Lord and Savior. That's when you will know that God is well pleased. Now today, (laughs) always, today we will see what the godly work is in this text and how it is that we shall attain it (laughs) as we look at the following three points. Point number one, the reason. The reason. Point number two, the response. The response. And point number three, the root. Hey, hey, hey. The root. Uh, I might. So let's deal with it. Point number one, the reason. Verse one. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. And not to please ourselves. Okay, okay. I tell you, I must admit that whenever I read this scripture in the past, I figured that the weakness was some sort of sin. You know that we were speaking of carnal Christians. The one who was sinning always that the weakness was some sort of sin. However, Preaching from this text for the first time, I had to study the text in context and not submit my own mindset of thinking, of understanding as the reality of the meaning of the text. Help somebody. I'm going to help us today. Hence, I found that I had to read the previous chapter and then one more previous chapter. <laughs> To understand what the weakness, what is the weakness that the Apostle Paul is speaking to? 
hence chapters 13 and 14 solidify to me what the weakness was. Lord have mercy. Church, the weakness was that there were those who refused to accept the work of the strength of grace. And they held on to the work of the weakness of the law. You that are strong ought to bear the infirmities. All right, all right. Let me be clear. Those who were bound by the law were actually in bondage that rendered them weaker than those who lived by the grace of Jesus Christ. They were not sinners. However, they were not living their best life. Shabbat. They were not evil or bad. However, they were weak. The grace Christians had to deal with those who were still attached to the works of the law. And we must look at the text in the context. This is when Christianity was birthed. So there were still many Jews, most Jews, who were under the old covenant, not under grace. And so they do not fully understand the work of grace. Because if they did, they will fully relinquish their grasp on the law and wholeheartedly embrace the walk of grace. Yet, just because they are law walkers, I cannot beat them to death about it. <laughs> I must understand their weakness. They are weak. Let's look at the word weak. Comes from the word a dinosaur. Sounds like a dinosaur. A, a dinosaur. Without strength. Impotent. Powerless. Weakly. Disabled. <laughs> you can't hold on to the law and be fully enabled by grace. Impossible. Church. You must understand that the law in comparison to Jesus Christ was weak and could not do what Jesus could do. It was powerless to forgive sins and powerless to cleanse from sin once and for all. If the law, hear me, has the strength to do it all and do completely what was needed to be done, God would not have had to have sent his only begotten son into the world to redeem the world from sin. Recall that it was Jesus who said this, Matthew 28 and 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power in Jesus. How do you think we could see this healing in the name of you? Oh, you come over now. See, I, I knew what I was preaching. I knew what I was singing. <laughs> mm -hmm. John 10 and 18. Look at this. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. I'm talking about power in Jesus. The power of Jesus is all power, and the power of the law is some power. You see? Hence, it is weaker to abide by the sun when you can live by it all. Lord Jesus. In the previous chapters, the New Testament believers are told that there will be those who focus on what you should eat, the day of worship, and that you pay tribute to authorities, and that you keep certain laws. The Bible said it. You want reading for this week? Romans 13 and Romans 14. That's where you'll read this. We are then admonished that really what we need to do is love. Come on. Come on. Yet understand where they are and leave them alone. <laughs> Don't harm them because they are weak. Their strength is in the law. You are strong. Your strength is in grace. There's some meat teaching for you all. <laughs> Ain't no lollipop today. All right. Romans 13 6 through 10. Listen, Romans 13, I'm going back for you. Watch this. For this cause, pay ye tribute also, 
For they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very being. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fair to whom fair, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment. Now notice. We don't hear one in particular, don't we? Because mm, he knew if, I, if Jesus had written that, they would claim, see, he said it, he said it, but he doesn't even mention it. It is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, see, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Basically, God wants us to understand that if we accept Jesus, if they accept Jesus, but want to keep the laws, they will make it into the kingdom of heaven. While you can, you and me, simply go through the door of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why do you think I got to talk about the law, especially number four, and Jesus? You've got to talk. You, you can't come without Jesus. Oh, Lord. Verses 2 and 3. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. The reason we are going to love the Lord keepers is because it will edify them. And also because this is what Jesus did for us. Jesus loved us when we were outside children. Uh huh. When we were outside of grace. Come on. And so now we must love them who hold on to the law and try to hold on to grace too. Just understand their weaknesses. Point two, the response. Now, because we understand their weakness, there is a way we must behave. Our response is kingdom. It is a kingdom response, which means that in our response, the kingdom is magnified, it's lifted. Verse 5. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another, according to Christ Jesus. Here is the key. God has been patient and concerning towards us. Therefore, church, as God has been to us, so must we be to others. See that? <laughs> See, some people, I know we're going, now I know you're going to say, Pastor, you were saved since you were seven. Don't mean I didn't think certain things. Don't mean I didn't want to take up. Okay, right. So therefore, I know where God has brought me from. And some of you, come on now, some of you stumbled into church. I know somebody here, the testimony, they came for a baby blessing drunk as a skunk, but they left as a saint. I'm telling you, it don't matter how you get into the house, you just got to get into the house. Uh, that no matter where you come from, what your past experience it is, I don't care if you're a whore, I don't care if you're in charge of the whores, I don't care if you're a pimp, I don't care if you're in charge of the pimp house, it doesn't matter where you come from, if you're the weed seller, if you're the her heroin dealer, you know, if you're the crack cocaine dealer, if you're the one selling the drinks, if you're the one giving the drinks to underage, all you got to do, I dare you, step into the house of God. I dare you, come into the house of the Lord. And right here, God will take your life, he'll turn it around in your midnight hour, and he'll show you that it doesn't matter where you come from, that God has a working plan. My God, there is something in that drug dealer's life. They got a business sense. They need to come into the kingdom and use it in the kingdom that God will edify them. There's something about that girl selling herself.
herself. She's got a weakness of esteem. But if she only understood that she's been made in the image of God, then God would take her life and elevate her to be a preacher, an evangelist of the gospel. God will do anything. And since I was an outside child, then I am going to have mercy and be kind to those who operate outside of the full grace, only grace of God. And so we've got to be like-minded. Let me look at that word, like-minded. Phreneo. Phreneo. To have understanding. Be wise to be of the same mind, that is, agreed together, cherish the same views, be harmonious, work with them. I have some beautiful relationships with those who worship on the Sabbath. I can work with them, you know why? Jesus. That's it. We've had some come in this church. They preach Jesus. We have no problem. We stand up. We, we're involved. Because it's all in the name of Jesus. And so church, in order to deal with us who are weak in understanding the superpower of grace, we will have to think as God thinks towards them. And how is God? God is patient and comforting or consoling. You must understand that they will not understand it the way we do, and yet God loves them the same. He loves them the same. Verse 6. Verse 6. That ye may be with one mind and one mouth glorify God. Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a godly work. That in all we do, it is done to glorify God. Oh, if before we do a thing and while we're doing a thing and after we do that thing, we say, is this, is this giving God glory? Is this building up the kingdom? Oh, it will change your life. How, how, how does, is this a reflection of heaven? You see, church, here is something I get. That as tempted as I am to focus on the differences, I really do honor those things that we have in common with others. For truly, as they believe in Jesus, they will be fine. Listen, and look, I know we sing a song every day, it's going to be Sunday up there. But ain't going to be no day. Or no like next day. Every day that's going to be eternity. Lord have mercy. Let me help you out. This is really going to hurt some of you, but still love your pastor. Ain't going to be no birthdays. That, like, when, when, June, when June comes, I'm not going to be like, where are the gang? Where are the June girl? Ain't going to be no June. Who cares? What? What? What am I celebrating the birthday for? It's eternity. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Ain't going to be no death days. Yeah. Ain't going to be no happy anniversary. Yeah. You better, we better be happy about our anniversary now because over there ain't going to be no marriage. Yeah. Come on, Sister Deal. All right. Ain't no birthdays in heaven. You need the angels to come to the earth. Oh, the gin, gin, 20th. Come on, come on, Ronnie Thrain. Happy birthday. Ah, ah. See, let me, let me tell you something. Let me help you out. Let me tell you why that ain't going to happen. You mm -hmm. Listen, listen, listen. Catch this, catch this. God just showed me, said, Maria, everybody's birthday is the same. Watch this. You don't have, uh, somebody's going to, if I look at Elders, I'll don't answer, I'll answer for you. <laughs> if I look at Elders, they say, in heaven, right? Or if I look at heaven's point of view. Elders, James, when is your birthday? In the kingdom. When Jesus Christ came into my heart. If I look at Deacon Jamal Richardson, I say, when is your, when is your kingdom birthday? When Jesus Christ came into my heart. Every birth, we all have the same birthday. That when Jesus Christ, when we accepted him into our hearts, when we accepted him as Lord and Savior, it's your birthday, it's your birthday. Ain't going to be no happy birthday. To, it's going to be every day. It's an indication that because you were birthed into the kingdom, you get to experience eternity. Ah, uh, can I tell somebody right now, maybe somebody looking at 
uh, this program on social media. That's why you want to make sure that you have a kingdom birthday while you are on this side of the grave. Nobody can give you a happy kingdom birthday when you're dead. Nobody can force you force that you've been born into the kingdom. You've got to have said, said, Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, you are Lord of my life. Jesus, I will walk after your example. I will live for you every day. Now you have been birthed into the kingdom. So we got to get people understanding. You have to make that choice now. And no preacher, no prophet, no king, no premier, no president, nobody, no pastor can put you in heaven unless you made the choice on this side of heaven. That's when you have a happy birthday. So understand that. And so I focus on what we have in common. And the moment that we have Jesus in common, my brother, my sister, we are now Christian kingdom siblings. And so I listen, I have patience. God has patience with me. I have patience, and when I look towards them to comfort them or make them comfortable, I am actually glorifying God. Okay? And, you know, and pastor, let me tell you, pastor, sometimes I'm listening to something, I can't say nothing, and I feel like broadcasting on the internet, stopping my car, Mom and dad have been in the car. Let me stop this car, put up this post. But I keep driving. I just keep driving. Say, no, don't shake it off. Say, shake it off. Don't do it. <laughs> because I'm tampering myself that, no, no, no. As long as everybody believes in Jesus. And, and so, therefore, to me, studying this word became very personal and empowering for me. I ain't got to fuss about them. They believe in Jesus. Skippity do that. Skippity day. My, oh, my, what a wonderful day. <laughs> I just want to glorify God. This word glorify comes from the word doxazo, doxazo, to praise, extol, magnify, celebrate, to render esteem. Meaning that, listen, before I esteem you, 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 and me, uh -uh, we're going to render all that. We're going to bring all the esteem that we want to give to this person, that person. Mm -mm. We're bringing it all together in one file, huh? and we're giving it to God. Huh? All the glory, all the honor, all the praise. God, you get it, God. And God, when they give it to me, God, I'm going to collect it. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And then I'm going to render it to you. Everything we do, God, my get the glory. When we focus on what we have in common, God gets his glory. God gets glory. When we focus on Jesus, God, remember God said, this is my son. So he wants us to focus on his son. So as long as you're focused, I told you already, I'll pray with anybody as long as they believe in his son. Don't tell me you believe in God and Jah, 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 do the, who Jah, who Jah, what's, what's the name of Jah's son? That's all I want to know. If they say Jah's son is Jesus, I'm going to say wonderful. So you believe in the shedding of blood and for the remission of sin. And oh, I believe you're going to heal. You believe in a heal cold monkey. I'm going to make sure off of that. Let's go deep. Don't be, don't be shallow. Go deep. We're extolling the name of Jesus. And see, hear me. Very important. Beautiful songs today. That everything we do must be centered around Jesus. He is the central figure of the gospel, and he must be the central figure of all that we do. So when we focus on Jesus, God gets the glory. Verse 7. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. This is our response to the weak. Receive them as Christ received us. I was weak. I was once weak. And when I was in sin, when I did those things that were contrary to the kingdom, God still sent his son for me. Still sent his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus came, bled, and died, rose again. And for that reason, it is with this love of Jesus Christ that I love all. And that takes me to my final point, point number three. The root. <laughs> the root. <laughs> Verse 8. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Now watch this. Here we now read of the strength of the truth. The truth is that Jesus served the circumcision. 
He was faithful to the law. He was circumcised as a Jew. Day number eight, he ran into the temple. You know, Simeon and Hannah lifted up him. I can't, you know, I'm already preached on that, so you really know that what was going on was a passing of the baton from law to grace. But I'm, He was circumcised. He was a faithful Jew. Now hear me. He was circumcised as a Jew. He met them where they were to take them to where he was going. If somebody ain't got transportation and you all want to meet somewhere on time, maybe it's best you go pick them up. <laughs> if not, they'll say, I'll get there when I get there. Hold up. No, we have an appointment. See? Mm -hmm. Therefore, it can be understood why many Jews accepted Jesus, but still held on to some of their old covenant works. This verse becomes a comfort to the Jews. But here Jesus speaks to heaven come for the Jews. They're people just like us. Jesus coming, embracing the Gentiles. The Jews be like, hold up. So Jesus tied us it up right here. It is reassuring to them as Jesus now moves on to welcome the Gentiles. Because they were kind of feeling left out. You know, the new kids on the block, the Gentiles. You know how it is. Somebody comes new in church, I give them a whole pile of things to you. Like, well, hey, what am I? Am I, you know, chopped liver? I don't matter anymore. Same thing. So he goes back to the Jews and says, it's all right. I still need you. I'm, I'm come for you. I ain't left you. Let me comfort you. Let me console you. But come on, Gentiles. Now, you know, if you're the new kid on the block, you're more excited. Oh, yeah. You had me blocked out. I weren't in it, but now I'm in it. No, man, what you want me to do, Jesus? What you want me to do? How, what you want me to do? You see, see the difference? My advice would be remain excited, everybody. Remain excited about God, what God has you do. Because the only way that somebody takes what you're doing is if you're not excited about what you do. Do what you're called to do. That's what you have to do. And so this is it. It's reassuring. Jesus now moves on to welcome the Gentiles. There's formerly not a part of the household of faith. Verse 9, he talked about the Jews, said, I got circumcised. I'm like, yes, circumcised, yes. It's in the law, yes, yes. Verse 8, verse 9, listen. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. <laughs> Unmet, what? For it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles. And sing unto thy name. Look at the focus move from works, Jews, to grace. Look at the focus move from Jew only to include the Gentiles. Now you try to go to Israel today as a Gentile. They still treat you like you're not worthy. It is the mercy of God that they have been included, that the Gentiles have been included. It made me think of that song, Mercy Rewrote My Life. I could have fallen, my soul cast down, but mercy rewrote my life. I, I wasn't included, but the mercy of God said, come on in, come on in. See, that's why no one can say, well, I'm not worthy of the kingdom. No, no, come on in, come on in. Huh? You, you don't come in full of worth. Lord have mercy. You gain worth as you gain the kingdom. It is by the mercy of God through Jesus Christ that I have been the Gentiles. We were grafted into the household of faith. Verses 10 and 11. And again he said, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. Oh Lord. And again, Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. Here the Apostle Paul is seeking to bring about a unity between the Jew and the Gentile. <laughs> no easy feat. But this is an effort to unite those who live by works with those who live by faith. It ain't easy today. I, I did my little effort to bring them in to preach. Come on now, let's be real. 
Papa made a suggestion I could come and speak for the women's um, session. He ain't invited me yet. It's still probably right now for real. <laughs> right? But I, 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 but I was there. I'm making the effort because it's about Jesus. The focus is that the Apostle Paul again is trying to bring about unity for in this effort to unite us by works and faith is where we're going to have the difficulty. The focus becomes that of both groups rejoicing about Jesus. If we can get you to rejoice about Jesus, and we can get you to rejoice about Jesus, now you can come together. Praise Jesus, speak highly about Jesus, and then we can come together. Now that makes sense to me. If Jesus is the focus, we will focus together. However, the minute that the focus becomes the law, the unity of fellowship is broken. Because you just tell me I'm, I'm not worthy. You tell me that my church is the beast church of Revelation. So you, you think we're going to focus together there? No. But as long as we... See this, see, see, this is where I said it's growing up teaching today. But if we can focus on Jesus, the door, the hope, the redeemer, now we're going to worship together. I, I want unity. I want us to focus only on the new covenant wrought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Verse 12. <laughs> and again, Isaiah says, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles in him shall the Gentiles trust. You notice it said in him, not in that. Not in it, in him. Mm -hmm. So, here it is. Isaiah is actually Isaiah. This New Testament verse is confirming what was written by the prophet of old, Isaiah. Isaiah 11, verse 10, it reads this. And in that day, Lord have mercy, a day to come. Ooh. And in that day, there shall be a root. He <laughs> of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. <laughs> Why is it, church, I help somebody, that in a time of turmoil, God's people can be at rest? Why is it? When some are being made redundant, you have a praise that's still abundant. Why is it that when friends and loved ones are dying, you can still have a praise on your lips? Can I tell you, it's because we have embraced the sign. We are in love with the root of Jesse. We are in love with the fact that Jesus has engrafted us in. So that means that in the midst, only some people are going to be able to get this. <laughs> in the midst of troubles, in the midst of trials, in the midst of all sorts of noise, you're at rest. How that happened? On your job, you don't know if you're going to have it next week. In the classroom, you're zooming this and zooming that. All over the place, you don't know what it's going to be like next week. Yet a child of God, whose faith and trust is in Jesus, is at rest. Huh? Oh, oh, everybody resting in the day. But can I tell you? You want to be able to rest right now, that no matter what's going on, why don't I have, why, I don't need to pick up a cigarette. I don't need to take a puff of weed. No, don't offer me a $5 bill. I don't know the call for real. No, don't tell me go down against God's list. No, don't stop that light born and try to say, just take some of this, it'll ease you. No, don't go into no matter physical. No, don't, don't go into no. Yo, don't do that stuff with me. No, 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 no. Don't talk about, you know, you need acupuncture because you got to open up the portals and release energy. Can I tell you that Jesus released all the energy when he chose to die? And he went and in an effort to save you and I, he went and he conquered death, hell, and the grave. And then you know what he did? He picked up the energy. 
and he rose and he says, all power is given unto me. And church, if you really want to rest, if you really want to be able to rest, you've got to rest in the all power of Jesus Christ. Root of Jesse, his rest shall be glorious. Hallelujah. Supernatural rest. When the world looks at you and says, well, why are they still praising God? They're still making noise down in that. Well, yeah. yes. But I know Jesus is still reigning. I is still sitting by the right, right hand of the Father, probably getting ready to stand up because the world is in such turmoil. And you want to know why I'm going to rest in Jesus? Because I'm not going to rest in me. I'm not going to rest in anybody else. I'm going to continue to seek the kingdom of heaven first. Hmm? And so the Bible is saying there will be a root that reigns over the Gentiles. This root would be from the house of Jesse. And church, we know that this root is David. Jesus is from the lineage of David. Oh, come on, Jesse's boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The shepherd boy, yeah. You sing a musician? Yeah. <laughs> that's why you either got the best band like your kind of worship center, you know, and you just say that's a bit of Jesse right there. Come on, Drew. What? Come on, Drew, David. Oh, you didn't know how the pastor did. I said, Lord have mercy. Uh, no wonder all the women were so attracted to David. No wonder they love musicians. Something about musicians. But, you know, you're going to get the right women. So I don't care how many you're going to get the right. Right woman each. One each. Just in chaos. Because there's something about what? I listen to those horns. I, I, you know, Maria, you're 55 years old. You've been married for what, 35 years. I say, what? That guy can blow. You know, you just something about that music. Then this fella hurt. Oh, and, and he knows when he gets the pass. He just looks and he gives a big old laugh. Why well, is he laughing at the pastor? Because he knows the pastor just got tripped up because of the music. How huh? she just felt something. I mean, it, it takes me to levels. I love to praise. I love to worship. And when the music is on point, Lord, have mercy. When the music's doing what it needs to be doing. Oh my God. I'll sing another three minutes. Yes, I'll sing a song for 13 minutes. Yes, as long as the music's going and the people are singing. It's glorious. I see glory. I feel glory. And I'll continue to worship God. I'll continue to magnify Him. I'll continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Sing songs of science. Sing spiritual songs. Hymns of praise. Because of the music that gives glory. See, see, unless it's empowered, I just why I have mm -mm, I have a standard around here. Unless it's empowered, come on, let's be getting through salvation and sanctification. Okay, I'm gonna need that name because mm. But that's David. That's that's why. I, come here, director. We're gonna testify. Just come over here for a minute. Just come here for a minute. Because sometimes you gotta hear a little something. Come here, come come come, young man. Deacon Ryan Durant. We'll talk to you. Deacon Ryan Durant. Yep, 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 Mike there. You want to hear a man's voice? <laughs> All right. Now, uh, Deacon, how many years ago did I share a vision with you approximately about what we wanted the band to become? Mike, up, yeah. I'll say about four or five, somewhere around. Four or five years. Did you see it happening when I said it? Not at all. Now, it's amazing how many people never see what I see. But what's happening today? Just testify. Tell them, tell them a little bit of what's happening. Where, where are we at? Where are we at? Um, yeah, Pastor had this vision some years ago. And I honestly, like I said, I didn't believe it. But, um, you know, I just put my feet out there, try to negotiate with some people and say, hey, come by church. It's fun. And four years later, here we are. We've got a row in one section. I'm, um, you know, God's enjoying it. So I'm happy. That's right. That's right. Amen. Thank you, director. No problem. That's right. I keep up with the musicians, see? Uh, I, I, I got to keep tight with them. Um, you know, come here, Jordan. I'm going to help you. Oh, come here, Jordan. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Yeah, next. The others are like, Lord, if she can't call me, come on, Jordan. Grab a mic. I get, I get over here. Stop, right there. Close, don't show his feet. Okay. So, now, a couple of weeks ago, I said I had been seeing something on TV. And I said, oh, my, I, I keep on seeing it. You remember what I saw? 
Your memory. What, what did I give you permission to get? Now, what did I see? Okay, so these the symbols. Right. I said, but how, how these symbols got this whole thing in it? I said, is that a strategic hole? Does it actually sound or something? No, not at all. Not at all. You see that? So I said, this is for the kingdom. So just get what you need to get. Not just one, get the hole, just get it. Yes. yes. Right? got no time for this. This is kingdom excellence. You invest in the talent. Now you don't keep not all. This money is not for you. Not for the gift. I'm see, you, you see, I'm teaching you something here. Because we're going to keep on focusing on the gift because the gift came from God. So as long as we focus on the gift, God gets the glory and your life is enhanced. We don't know what God's doing for you because you're doing it after the glory of God. Thank you, Brother Jordan. I'm going to leave. I'm, 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 I'm going to just ease you up. I'm going to leave you alone this time around. But get ready. Your time's coming. And don't worry, I can freely call from the overflow uh, uh, the rest of them too. <laughs> now, what am I saying? Listen to me. I don't care where they are. Because let me tell you, it's, you got to understand, gee, God says, the one who's going to bring you glory is from the root of Jesse. Talking about David. Bring it forth, Jesus. She, she, watch this now, watch it. That means the giftings that are in David can bring forth salvation if you operate in the gift right. And so therefore, all the musicianship, if you operate it, it right, it's going to bring about salvation. I'm expecting salvation. I'm expecting increase. I'm expecting kingdom glory because that came from the root of Jesse. <laughs> Oh, so let me go more into the teaching. Now. Let me go more. I'm almost done too. Yeah, here we go. So Jesus is from the lineage of David. Now trees have roots. These roots grow downward and spread throughout the soil. In order to be able to acquire water and food or nutrients. They have tubes called xylem and phloem, which are designed for transport Jesus, of the water and nutrients up. So you grow up. See, see, see. Uh, stop the Holy Ghost. Yes, keep it again. I'm sorry. Look, that, that's why when you come into the house of the Lord, you stand up and you lift them up because you're being nourished from the root. And you got water and nutrients. So even, Lord have mercy, if you came into the church feeling weak, huh? not full of zeal and energy, there is some time, somewhere during the service when you feel your help. Yay, coming on. All of a sudden you're hooking on to the power huh, of Jesus. Watch this now. Uh huh. Jesus is the root. It's the root, the root, the root. All the water and nutrients that we need in this life come from him. He supplies us with what we need for life. So the text is telling the Jews that Jesus will be the root for the Gentiles. Now see, just on the side, and you wonder why they said crucify him? When you understand this, you understand. They're like, what? Maybe we can join with the Gentiles. There's stinking old dirty Samaritans, all of them. Jesus said, yes, I can for them. Crucify them. See, 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 see. I'm trying to help somebody. Uh, Jesus will be the root for the Gentiles. Jesus will be our water, living water. Jesus will be our food, bread of life. Come on. Uh, no longer was this an exclusive club that excluded others. Note the root, Jesus the root, uh, Jesus the Christ made it so that salvation and glory and honor unto Jesus was enjoyed equally by the Gentile church and this is the only equal rights that matters. <clears throat> Hear me. The only, the only equal right that matters right at the foot of the cross. That's where we're all equal. Come on, that's where the sinner, every one of us, was, every one of us stood there, came into the kingdom. And it don't matter if you're homosexual, heterosexual, these days, pansexual, pedophile, 
whatever, Lord Jesus, if they made it into the house and got to the foot of the cross, there will be a change in their life and they will be of equal standing to you and I by their choice. And Jesus could, God could raise them up. Oh, right. have mercy. That's an exciting thing to me. That's why this church, by the way, has embraced those who came. We, I didn't say accepted. We embraced them with love. A couple of, a couple of them got over it and became members. And some of them went back. But here's the point. We, we welcomed them so they knew enough love as Shekinah, love, 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 where they became members. <laughs> Come on, you, you, ask, you ask what her name, Lady T, what we call her? Tyson, Yes, yeah, she became a member, wore a dress too. So she felt good and comfortable. She has a relation, I, yeah, I like her, she likes me, that's no problem. But you got to keep on going for the actions, oh Lord, how, see, the, see that's, why you, that's why you can't stop at salvation. It has to be sanctification. Yeah. In other words, no matter what the law says, I'm coming to you, Jesus. No matter what the law permits me to do, I'm coming to you, Jesus. It's all in the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it, church. And so now here we are at verse 13, our final verse for today. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope <laughs> through the power of the Holy Ghost. Church, when you do the godly work of unity, of keeping the peace, of being patient and providing consolation, you will be able to live in hope. And this hope is the everlasting faith to be able to live this life as a kingdom citizen. In so doing, we are filled with all joy and peace. Now, all, all comes from the Greek word pas, P-A-S, pas. Each, every, any, the whole, everyone, all things, everything. Church, when you love to do the godly thing, always, you will love with all joy and peace. And this is no easy. I'm saying it, but we have to work at it every day. You know, Bishop, she was talking about it today. She said somebody called her this week, and she couldn't believe how they were calling, talking to her. They weren't cursing, but the way they were responding to her. And she said, and I'm their pastor. They, 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 that helped the pastor out right here. She said, how could a member talk to me that way? He said, but they've been hooked up with so and so, and they've been talking about me, so that's why they can do what they do. Eee! Ain't no old peace in her, the member. Bishop still has it. <laughs> And so the more joy and peace you have, the more you will abound in hope. See, I, I've got this hope. That's why I don't give up on anybody. I'm abounding in hope. Oh, they're going to come around. Oh, they're going to make it. I'm just going to keep on saying it because you know what? It does me no harm. You know why? I'm resting. Yee! I'm glorifying in God so much. You're not going to take away my peace and my joy. You can say what you want. Call me what you and this is what the Bible it speaks to. God will give you hope beyond hope. When you shouldn't, what do you mean you still got hope? Do you mean you ain't giving up? I got hope beyond hope I, because hope abounds. I'm abounding in hope. You will believe God for the impossible when you live for joy and peace direct. Seek to abound in hope. That is, seek to have the joy and peace of God. In this way, you will never lack in the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. When you have Jesus, you have the hope and the joy of the world. And only then will you be able to say, blessings abound. Church, I am not kidding you. I'm not going to tell you that my whole week is easy. It can't be easy. You know, I, I could bring my sister up here as a witness as we take care of our mom and dad. It can get tiresome, but it's a blessed hope. It's a joy for me to do so. Now, joy goes beyond my feelings. Sometimes I feel like I'm just saying this, you know, you just want to twinkle your eyes and be in, a, in somewhere else. <laughs> just take a break. But then I recognize, watch this, what she experienced, how it goes. My mom cared for us like none other. 
<laughs> my mom, this woman, she ironed something at my house. I say, how can this be? She irons better than me. Because of the excellence with which she took care of the household, God keeps on telling me, now it's abounding out to her. And she wants to do these. Mama, you ain't got to do that. You know, Al and I, we got it, we got it. Raymond, we got it. It's covered. You worked it out. You don't work. You don't work no more, nothing. You don't have to do a thing. Sit there and look pretty. That's it. Because you did the work. Now it's been imputed unto us. We do the work unto you. This is how it is with hope. Hear me. That because you have hope in Jesus Christ, you ought to have an abundance of what you have so that you can help somebody else out. You can't give what you don't have. And when you only have a little bit of something, you can't afford to give too much. However, when your hope and your joy is full in Jesus, you can give and God will give you more because you're in abundance. Church, God always has more than double for the trouble. Oh yeah. And though I speak of our experience, your experience is the same or similar. And so, here's what I want you to understand, church. The godly work is the work of love. The godly work is that we can be at rest because of love. And that all glory goes to Jesus.